The Last Wish by James Robb, Esquire One summer night, when the stars were flickering and fading one by one, and the rosy light of the dawn began to appear in the eastern sky, Starry Crown, the tiny fairy king, came galloping through the wood on his little enchanted steed. It sped along so quickly that the wind whistled through his waving white mane, and the silver harness jingled like tinkling bells. Little King Starry Crown was in a great hurry to reach his palace, before the round red sun rose above the tops of the pine trees on the hill. It would be a dreadful thing to be out and about in the broad daylight, for then the magic power would vanish from his wonderful wishing ring, and the four enchanted silver shoes might fall from his feet of his fairy horse. So on they sped knee-deep in flowers and ferns, while the plant stood erect at either side of his path, like little brown soldiers in their sentry boxes. Suddenly, out of a leafy tree, flew a hooting owl, whoot woo! Its mournful notes so startled the little horse that he stumbled over the roots of an oak tree and lost one of his silver shoes. But though Stardy Clown heard it fell, with a faint splash into a tiny stream, he dared not stop, even for an instant, to pick it up. The silver horseshoe lay on the pebbles at the bottom of a shallow, shallow brook. And by, and by, three little minnows and a water beetle swam up and sta stared at it in wonder. Then the sun burst forth, and shone down through the lacy canopy of the leaves and burnished the stream so that the little fairy horseshoes sparkled like diamonds. Then the woodland creatures, the birds, the butterflies, the squirrels, the rabbits, and prickly hedgehogs awoke and stretched themselves. Before long, the forest was alive with a hundred soft little fluttering, scuttering sounds. It was morning. <clears throat> At the edge of the forest stood a small whitewashed cottage with a garden full of marigolds and lavender. Here lives Mrs. Gay and her son Jimmy. They were poor, but Mrs. Gay knew how to spend her money wisely, so there was always enough good food to eat and warm clothing to wear in the wintry weather. Jimmy's father was a sailor and was now far away across the sea in some foreign land. Every morning Mrs. Gay would say, I wonder if your father will come home today, Jimmy. To which he would reply, Perhaps he will, Mother. And they would often run out to the gate and stare down the forest path in the hope that Mr. Gay would appear and bring them some fortune from the distant shore. On the very same morning that King Starry Crown lost the magic horseshoe, Jimmy looked out from his bedroom window and saw the dewdrops gleaming like jewels on every leaf and every flower. Hurrah! he shouted. Holiday today! I'm gone fishing! So, in next to no time, he pulled on his patched clothes and tumbled downstairs into the kitchen to find his breakfast ready by his mother. Bustling to and fro, tidying the neat little house after breakfast, Jimmy whistled for his little dog, Nip, who came dashing along the path, barking excitedly. As soon as he saw his master pick up the fishing net, instead of a school bag, he knew he was going to have a day of adventures in the woods. Jimmy waved to his mother and entered the wood, carrying an empty jam jar in one hand and a net in another. Before long he came to a very place where the fairy horse had lost and stumbled and lost his shoe. He looked down instead of up into the branches at the birds. He would have seen the marks of the tiny hoofs on the mossy ground. Here's a lovely place to fish, he called to Nip, and sitting on a tree stump he dipped his net into the water. Nip backed out of the rabbit hole and arrived, panting happily, with dry leaves, earthy balls all over his face. Then giving Jimmy's bare knee a friendly lick, he lay down to wait for a catch. A family of minnows appeared, swinging over upstream, and Nip's short tail quivered excitedly as Jimmy drew the net towards them. But just as the little fishes were almost in, 
the net. Nip gave a short, exciting bark, and in a flash they were gone. Damn, bad dog, exclaimed Jimmy as he dragged the net out of the water. There was not a fish to be seen. But in the corner of the net lay something hard and bright. It was the little magic horseshoe. <gasps> when Jimmy went home to dinner and showed his silver horseshoe to his mother, she says, why? She says, why? It will just do to fix on the heel of your boot, for the iron of cobbler put on has fallen off. So Jimmy took off his left boot and nailed the silver horseshoe to the heel. It fitted exactly right. But no sooner had he put the boot on his foot, the magic began to work. His feet gave a jump and a skip, and something seemed to spin on him around three times like a top. Then he found himself running along a strange path in the woods. And he came to a last high green wall, and straight in front of him was a small gate, studded with tiny golden nails. Jimmy stopped, stooped low, and tried the handle. The strange little gate was securely locked, but as he dropped his hand, a small square door in the gate opened, and a tiny voice cried, Who goes there? Who goes there? And an elfin face peered from within. Oh... On seeing Jimmy, the tiny creature gave a frightening shriek, and the little door was slammed with force. Bang! Though he tapped very gently and spoke in a little low voice, the little people who lived there within could not be persuaded to let him in. What a strange little face it was, thought Jimmy. As he stood looking at the high wall, hoping to see another way in, I wish I was small and able to get inside. As soon as he spoke, you're not going to believe what happened. His silver shod heel gave a hop, a skip, a jump and a spin round like a top. And in an instant he found himself on the other side of the little gate. Before him lay a fairy country of many fields, rivers, hills and valleys. Jimmy saw villages and towns dotted here and there on the distant landscape, and just below him lay the prettiest little town of all. Its little houses were painted bright colours. Three sparkling fountains sent rainbow-coloured drops into the air and centre of the marketplace, and the little townspeople hurried busily out to and fro among the gay little stalls. Jimmy hurried down the hill and looked longingly at the creamy buns and gingerbread men for sale on the pastry stall. No one paid the least attention to him, for he was now exactly the same. As same size as the inhabitants of this fairy town. I am hungry, he thought. I wish I had money to spend. Instantly, his left foot gave a queer little shake, a quick spin round like a little top, and jingling in his pocket with a gingerbread man. In his hand, Jimmy found a seat on the brink of the coloured fountain. It was fun to be one of the fairy people. He nibbled a delicious little fairy food and nibbled and watched a gay procession of smart little soldiers into the marketplace. At their head marched three tiny heralds dressed in scarlet and gold. The heralds, his majesty's heralds, cried the market folk, as they caught sight of the bright uniforms in the centre of the marketplace. And leaving their stalls, the wares unattended, they pressed close to the fountain to hear the royal proclamation. The golden trumpets rang out clear and sweet, then the chief herald stood on the steps of the market across, crying in a clear, clear voice, Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, his majesty's king's sturdy crown has lost the magic horseshoe of silver. It fell into the, one of the streams in the great forest. Beyond the fairy gate, a wonderful reward is offered to the finder. The announcement made the heralds blow upon their trumpets and march through the marketplace in direction of the royal palace on a distant hill. Hmm. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy.